Now, of course, the industry would not be what it is today if it weren't for some of the greatest designer fragrances to have ever been released. In today's episode, I'm going to be going over 10 of the absolute best designer fragrances ever. I'm excited to share this list with you and also hear what are your selections, so make sure to stay tuned. Before I begin today's episode and I tell you about these 10 best designer fragrances to have ever been released, of course this video does warrant a part 2 and a part 3 and I will make sure to show those fragrances honor and do their due diligence in the time to come. But before I start this video, I do want to mention that if you're a fan of fragrance related content, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, and also give this video a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, it would really mean a lot to me. So. It goes without saying that a lot of fragrances pave the way for their successors. So a lot of fragrances might utilize a certain DNA and they might be the originators of that particular genre, DNA, classification, whatever you want to call it. And I've noticed throughout my vast experience of dealing with both designer and niche fragrances, it's usually the designer fragrances that pave the way and the niche fragrances are typically the ones that dare to be a little bit more experimental. But for example, let's start off with this one, which of course I personally believe is one of the greatest designer fragrances ever manufactured. I've owned several bottles of it. This one by Zadig and Voltaire is called This Is Him. This is vanilla and incense. Such a peculiar combination, but it's sensual, it's smooth, it's mysterious, and it has a grown-up characteristic about it. Of course, we also have fragrances like Christian Dior's Sauvage. Now, of course, I'm going to mention the Eau de Toilette just because, yes, Sauvage Elixir is fantastic. And on a personal level, this gets me more compliments. I prefer Elixir just as far as it resonates with my personal tastes. But Sauvage is the best-selling designer fragrance on the market period, no matter where you go, no matter where you're looking for it. And of course, fragrances like Sauvage have opened the door to a lot of other fragrances like Prada Lunarosa Carbon, I think it is. And of course, there's also Coach for Men and there's uh, Versace Dylan Blue. So there's a lot of other fragrances that have kind of utilized that Sauvage DNA. So like I said, you know, they're trendsetters in a way. We also have Aqua Dijon. I think this is the Eau de Parfum, but of course I'm referring to the Eau de Toilette. I just grabbed this for convenience sake. The Eau de Toilette came out in the mid 90s and it was one of those releases right along L'Odyssey Pour Homme by Issey Miyake and Le Mans by Jean Paul Gaultier. It's an amazing mid 90s release with the Lily, the k -Loan, the aquatic tendencies, Alberto Morias is a genius. And of course, with this fragrance, we also must pay homage to Cool Water by Davidoff, Aspen by Cody. Those are the aquatics that preceded uh, Aqua Dijon, uh, but Aqua Dijon is still selling like hotcakes today. So it goes without saying that if you walk into a Macy's or a Nordstrom or a Sephora, they're gonna have Aqua Dijon in stock, fantastic aquatic. Look, I also think Christian Dior's Dior um, Intense is one of the best designer fragrances ever released. It has that sweet vanilla, the pear, the musk mallow, and of course this is an iris-based fragrance. And you know what they've said about the original Dior Homme, and I co-sign a lot of the things that are being said about it, which is that it smells like lipstick. It smells waxy, and this one has that sort of sensuality. Uh, about it, but at the same time, it has a little bit of that added sweetness, which makes it a little more playful than the original Dior Um. I absolutely love Dior Um Intense. I also, of course, have to mention Spice Bomb, a composition by Olivier Polge. Beautiful fragrance. I bought it right when it came out, blind buy, probably my first blind buy that I ever initiated. And I saw it on the website, and I was always a huge fan of Flower Bomb. But this one, the pink pepper, the tobacco, the spices, it is amazing. Uh, longevity is decent. Some of the flankers do a lot better. Uh, so you might want to look into some of the flankers if you're interested in performance, projection, longevity, so on and so forth. But Spice Bomb is amazing. Look, I mention this next fragrance all the time, Bulgari Tiger. Yes, this is part of the La Gem collection, which I think is like $400. If you have the money to smell fantastic, Bulgari Tiger is phenomenal. Um, but at the end of the day, it is a designer brand. Even though it is part of um, a higher tier line, if you will, 
Bulgari Tiger, it's a Jacques uh, Cavalle fragrance, and this fragrance has ginger, there's uh, grapefruit, there's ambroxan, it's fresh, it's refreshing, and it's one of the greatest DNAs, and there are so many other brands that have replicated it, and some of them have put out kind of their own version of it, but we have to pay respects to the original. Of course, I mentioned this before, Le Mans by Jean-Paul Gaultier. Love this stuff. This is probably my fourth or fifth bottle of Le Mans. Of course, I've been wearing this for a very long time. Nobody out there is a stranger to Le Mans. Walk into Macy's today, you'll smell Le Mans. And of course, Francis Kirk John did a phenomenal job with this composition. Mint, vanilla, lavender. It's playful, it's outgoing, you can wear it on a date. Of course, the only criticism that it will receive is that it will remind people of the 90s or they've smelled it on tons of other people. And yes, it is that popular, successful DNA. So inevitably, you are gonna get people comparing it to maybe an ex-boyfriend or something like that. Angel for Men by Thierry Mugler. Ethyl maltol, caramel, chocolate, patchouli, vanilla, this stuff is amazing. Yes, a little bit on the daring side of things. For a lot of people, it smells kind of leathery or it has that tar note, but Angel for Men, as a gourmand for men, really just did something groundbreaking in the mid-90s. So it's a phenomenal fragrance, and Angel for Men is one that I have repurchased many times throughout the years, and I have all of the associated flankers, whether we're talking about Pure Wood, Pure Malt, Pure Havan, some of them are discontinued, I know, but the original is still out there. One of the greatest designer fragrances ever released. Of course, I must also talk about this fragrance because this has such a great track record. For so many years, it did so well, and it still does very well, and I think the flankers are proof of that. Bleu de Chanel. Grapefruit, incense, fresh, professional, clean. Uh, very diffusive if we're talking about the eau de toilette, if you're looking for maybe not as high of a diffusive factor, but maybe better longevity, then you're probably going to get into some of the flankers, the eau de parfum or the parfum version. Now, the fragrance that I put in the number one spot, I was just thinking about this and I said, you know, with all of the clones that exist of this fragrance and this being a very high-end designer brand, and yes, the price is high up there as well. It didn't used to be. It has skyrocketed in recent years, unfortunately. But this fragrance is unique, it's daring, it was novel, and it did something earth-shattering and groundbreaking when it first came out. Now we have like 30, 40, 50 clones of it, and everybody wants to put out their own twist or inspiration of it. But nevertheless, all of these fragrances could have been number one. It just depends on your mood, your personal taste, so on and so forth. But I'm deciding to talk about Tuscan Leather by Tom Ford. Tom Ford is obviously a designer brand, as is you know Louis Vuitton and many other brands, Carolina Herrera, that I could have mentioned in this video, which is why I said in the beginning it warrants a part two or part three or part four, and it can go on interminably, but Tuscan leather, the raspberry, the leather, the saffron, it's mysterious, it's dark, it's rich, it has won the affection, mention, and adoration of many a celebrity. Try it for yourself if you haven't. I will leave all of the appropriate links down below for your convenience. Thank you so much for watching. 10 of the best designer fragrances ever released. What are your favorites? What are the ones that you would say, look, the industry would not be what it is today if it weren't for this fragrance or that fragrance? I always love to hear from you. Drop your comments down below. Also, if you enjoyed this video or if you took something of value from today's episode, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, and give this video a thumbs up for the algorithm. Thanks again for watching. I love you all, and we'll see you tomorrow with a new episode. Bye.